Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Welcome to Shiloh, the place of your breakthrough. You can never remain the same. This is where breakthrough takes place. Bwana asifiwe, the 10th of March, 2024, the year that we are threshing mountains. It doesn't matter how many mountains have been standing before you, but this year, we are not only crashing, threshing hills, we are threshing mountains. Karibu Nisana. My name is Beatrice Waitaka, and I'm born again this morning. The job of the Lord is my strength. I serve here. I'm a daughter in the house. I want to salute our parents, wherever they are. I know we have their blessings. We served in this place. It is only hot now. This be a thing of the past. It is only hot now. Don't worry. It is only hot now. When I saw Sifiwe, but you are coming out. Yes, we are going there. Not here, there. That's where we are going. And this morning, by the grace of God, I want to share on a topic, the warm Jacob. The warm. The warm Jacob. Threshing the mountains. Our theme for this year comes from the book of Isaiah 41, verse number 14 to number 16. That is our theme for this year. We thank God because every year we have a theme. And my prayer is, don't let a theme pass you over. Without one thing you can say out of this theme, this is what the Lord did to me. And my prayer is that you who came in this place this morning, you not live the way you came. Because there's something you are going to learn as I learn. Because, you know, God never gathers his people in vain. We are gathered here because of one thing that you can encourage one another. That this is a petrol station. That you can be fooled because there is a week, there is a month, there is many years ahead of you. Bwana Yesu The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 41, verse number 14 to 16. Fear not, you warm Jacob. You can ask, why did the Lord call Jacob a worm? Because if he called him a lion, you, you could not be in, the, in this scripture. Because you know lions have strength. Lions have the ability. Lions have the power. But a worm. And I want you to think about this morning. When you came to this place, either you are driving or you came by mud, you came by foot. How many worms have you stepped on? Warm ni mududu. Lest you forget. Warm ni mududu. Na warm ni munyama. Na munyama hakai kwa nyumba. Munyama anaka kwa barabara. Where you passed this morning. That's where the worms live. How many worms have you stepped on this morning? <clears throat> Therefore the Lord told Jacob, Fear not you, warm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord. And you are Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I want to encourage somebody this morning. I don't know what you have gone through in life. And I don't know what you are going through now. You look at yourself, you say, me, I am nothing. You are not nothing if you are not a worm. If God can address a worm, what about you? You are something. But the Lord is saying this morning, I am going to help you. You have tried Years have gone, years have come. But this year, the Lord is saying, and today this morning, the Lord is saying, fear not, I am going to help you. You have run out of steam, run out of strength, but he's saying this morning, fear not. There's nothing bad in life, friends. Like two things, fear and shame. Those are two big mountains in our life, fear and shame. And I want to bring the message home for the parents that are here. There's nothing but like going home in the evening and meeting your house locked. That is shame. Lando dalikuja na kasema, amechoka kuambiwa fanya nini? Agoje. Na mefunga nyumba. When we were growing up, they used to put two bad locks. You come excuse me, onekaga moja mambili. They used to put two bad locks. You enter, you cannot enter because you have nowhere to call a home. Number two, the next fear. And the next shame is when your children are sent away from school. And you know when they are sent away from school? They don't sit in the house. They come, change uniform, and go out to pray. You don't have a face. 
So you come in the evening, unawakuta hapo. Tulifukuzwa saa tano. So everybody in the compound knows what to talk walifanya nini. But the Lord is telling Jacob, fear not. For I, not we, I the Lord will help you. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, to comfort and encourage the weak is the first duty of a minister. And that's why you came here in this, this morning. Because you said, let me go to the house. No matter how down I am, let me go to the house of the Lord. Because I know in the house of the Lord, I will be encouraged. In the house of the Lord, I will meet people of my same, of the same kind. In the house of God, I will meet a brother and I say, who's going to encourage me? So the first duty of a minister, it is to encourage the command of God to all his servants is strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees and dispel the fears of the desponding with an assurance that their God will come and save them. This we find from the book of Isaiah 35 verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 35 verse 3 and 4. The Bible says strengthen the weak hands. Do you have a witness here who has weak hands? And make firm the feeble knees. Are your knees feeble? Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Verse number four. Say to those who are fearful, hearted, be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vigilance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. He will not send anybody. It is him who is coming. In that situation that you are this morning, you're saying, no, I just feel I can give up. Give up, go to where? Where are you giving up to go? He's saying, I will come. And vigilance belongs to who? To God. Yes, you are sad. You are, on the wrong, you are not on the wrong, you are on the right. But the Lord is saying this morning, vigilance belongs to me. And I am coming to repay you. This is an office executed by our Lord, our, Lord, our blessed Lord, who carries the lamb in his bosom and gently leads them that are with the young. Isaiah 40, verse number 11. The office of the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. Are you a flock? Because you cannot be a shepherd. You are either a flock or a shepherd. Oh, who are you? A flock. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm. And carry them in his bosom. And gently lead those who are with the young. The parents are here. The Lord is saying, he will carry you, the parent, and the young one, your children. Because in his him, you'll have your safety. The delight which the father himself also takes in raising up the dropping minds of his people. You are saying, Mine mefika musho. Thank God, musho wako do mwanzo wa mungu. Unless you come to your end. Musha wako, diwa mwazo wa nani? You are moved. Therefore, thank God that you have come to the end of yourself. You see, look at your, your pace through and say, Ma, there are so many days than a money. But the Lord is saying, I am here to help you. It appears obvious in this that he regularly addresses them in terms which they, through strictness, would use to distinguish themselves. And then under those very characters assures them of his most favorable regards. He does not keep quiet. When you speak to him, he doesn't keep quiet. He knows what you are going through. He knows what you want. And he knows where you are going. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he knows your end coming to your beginning. Jesus was there to the end. Then he came back for you. So every obstacle in your life, every mountain in your life, every valley in your life, he knows it because he passed there before you. And then he came Took hold of your hand, Honu. Let's go together. When Peter was, saw Jesus, and between him and Jesus, there was water. He told him, if it is you, tell me to come. Jesus told him, come. And this mother is saying, come. Don't look at the water. Don't lose your focus. Look unto Jesus, the other, and the fisher of your faith. This may not be good in between where you are. And where Jesus is. But he's saying, don't look at what is before you. Look at me. And then you come. Three things concerning the warm. Number one, it is their character. The warm. Their character. 
they have a character. Regardless of how minute they are, regardless of how small they are, they have a character. Just like you and me, we have our character. We come from different backgrounds. I don't know where you came from. I don't know where, but I know we came from the 47 counties. Unless you are not a Kenyan. We all belong to one county among the 47. So you have your own character. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. In the morning, our, our, our Pastor Paul was the one who was missing in the morning. And he was talk, talking about, about the, the change in a name. The, the power in a name. And he said this. That we or you, where you come from. You are named after your grandmother. And your grandmother was a witch. And because it is the tradition, it is the character of our, uh, of our background, the character of our family, you must be named after that witch. But the Lord is saying, I am going to change your name. Jabez, that was the first thing that the Lord did to him. And we were given three, three four people in the morning. Number one was Abraham. For God to bless Abraham, make him a father of generations, he had changed it from Abraham to Abraham. Are we together? It is in your Bible. Number two was Jacob. Jacob left home, known as Jacob, when he was coming to meet his brother Esau. The Lord had changed his name to who? To Israel. Therefore, Esau did not meet Jacob. He met who? And I tell you, life was never the same. The Lord decided to change you. And the third one was Peter. Peter, for those who have read their Bible, Peter alikuwa number one, kimbele mbele. Unajua kimbele mbele? But out of his kimbele mbele, he became the rock. Wewe umekua cool. Do you have a name? Can the Lord change your name? It's good to be kimbele mbele in the house of God and be aggressive. I think kimbele mbele ni aggressive. Oh, ni aggressive. It's good to be aggressive in the house of God and in the work because out of his aggressiveness, the Lord changed his name from Peter to who? To the rock. And finally, we were told about Jesus Christ. Because of his passion for the lost, dying on the cross and resurrection, he became, he was given the name which is above every name that at his name, every knee shall bow. And every time shall confess that Christ is Lord. This morning, friends, the Lord is still at work. Are you ready to be changed? Are you ready to be given another name? Therefore, we go to your character. The name of a worm is applied to our Lord, to our blessed Lord, indicate his low and helpless condition during his stay on earth. Jesus Christ, as you find this in the book of Psalm 22 verse number 6, Psalm 22, verse number 6. Jesus said this, But I am a worm, and no man, a, re, a, 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 a reproach of men, and despised by the people. That is our Savior. And today, that's why he has a name that is above every other name, because he was despised. Not only like a worm, he was despised. Nobody respected him. Some called them, Mtoto wa Seremara. Carpenter's sound. All those names, Jesus had them. But you know one thing. I should not lose my focus where I am going. Friends, things will come. Because life will not favor you. But God can favor you. Buona sifiwe. Yes. But as applied to us, it's rather, it, it rather represents our weakness and insufficiency for anything that is good insufficiency and our weakness. Jesus became what he became because of me and you. He had no sin, but he was made a sinner so that you and me can be made a saint. In our insufficiency, in our weakness, he took it all and he said one word, it is finished. Nobody has the mandate to come and tell you you have a debt, or you have a loan, or like, uh, or a loan. but he said it is finished. It is up to you to decide. Do you still become a debtor or become a free person? Buana asifiwe. For there is no creature less capable of active effort than a worm. Active effort like a worm. And I ask you when I was beginning, how many worms have you stepped upon this morning when you are coming to church? And you are so less concerned because you didn't see it. And you say, you are in the wrong place. No, you 
But the Lord is saying, you warm Jacob. Put your name there. You warm Beatrice. You warm. The Lord is saying, I will help you. It doesn't matter how you've been ignored by people. People ignore you because of your size. They want big people. You go to the, to the, to the army. When they are recruiting people, say, come on, your figure fit flani, you don't qualify. But the Lord is saying, you qualify to be in my kingdom. No matter your size, no matter your height, you qualify. Therefore, I will help you. Buana sifiwe. In the book of Matthew 12 and verse number 34. Matthew 12, 34. The Bible said, Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your mouth. What does your mouth speak? Do you speak failure? Do you speak to be defeated? The Lord is listening to the ones from your mouth. May you fill your mouth. And fill your heart. So that when you fill your heart with the word of God, your mouth will definitely speak of the goodness and the gentleness of the Lord. Because life, life, friends, life is not easy. And life is not for the weak, it's for the strong. In the book of 2 Corinthians 3, verse number 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. To think of anything as been from ourselves, but our, but our sufficiency is from God. Your sufficiency cannot come from your background, cannot come from your employer or from your business. It can only come from who? From God, your maker. God himself must give us both to will and to do. If he speaks to you, do this. He gives you the will. The will comes before the action. Do you will. And then you do what? You act. Philippians 3.13. Not that we are... Philippians 3.13, sorry. Philippians 2.13, sorry. 2.13, it's 2.13. Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Not for your own pleasure. Not for your good pleasure. But for his good pleasure. He gives you the will. And they give you the energy to act. And marks work in all good in us. As reasonable beings, we have yet a considerable portion of the divine image upon us. The image that you have, it is not from your father or your mother. We say, this boy looks like the father. No. You look like your maker. It is divine. You can see two, two, two parents that are dark seen. They bring forth a light child. There's some, you know, people say, Tell them, I'm like my, I'm coming after my maker. Because nobody, nobody can give you identity. And nobody can give you a face. It is only our Lord and our Savior. And he said, let us create man in our own Image, not of the, the image of their background or their forefathers or their mothers. Let us create man in our own image and likeness. Therefore, your image, it is divine. It doesn't matter. Mapu yako ni kubwa, masikio yako ni kubwa, ikiwa kubwa masikio, unasikia mengi. Sindio, mapu ikiwa kubwa, unanusa haraka. Whatever people bring you, please take it and be positive. Macho yako ni kubwa, unuona mbali. Sasa naweza ona mbali kwa sababu ya nani? Ya bwana nitia yangu. <laughs> yes, don't be intimidated. Whatever they tell you, tell me, my image is divine. Na wewe ni mfupi kama tumekuwa sisi wote warefu. Nani angechukua viatu chini? Na wewe ni mrefu, yes. Make take advantage of my height kwa sababu naweza chukua kitu uwezi fikia. Your image is divine because the Lord is saying, fear not, I will help you. Bwana asifiwe. The book of Jeremiah 13.23. Jeremiah 13.23. The Bible says, Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Can he? I'm talking to you. Please talk to me, church. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard, it spoils? Unuona leopard, akona yu madoado, unafia neza kuwa black. Anke kuwa black plain or white plain. Then, May you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. 
are we together? Bwana Yesu asifie. Number two, the first one was the character. Now number two, their labors. Their labors. The warm Jacob is required to thresh mountains and to reduce them all to dust. Not only threshing the mountain and leaving the rocks, but you're supposed to thresh the mountains and leave them as dust. Though himself liable to be crushed beneath the smallest cloud, he must address himself to this mighty task. There were all human obstacles to the progress of Christian church, which yet it was destined to overcome. So there are mountains in the way to every individual, even you who is sitting in this place this morning, there is a mountain that is facing you. And you're telling them, for how long, for how long will this mountain stand before me? Is it mountain in marriage? Is it mountain in career? Is it mountain in, your, in salvation? No matter the mountain, those are obstacles in life. And occurs to every individual, which yet you must remove. Before he can arrive at the promised land, look at the children of Israel. There, were, there are so many obstacles that were standing before them. But the beauty is the one who promised to take them through finally took them to the promised land. What is the Lord saying concerning your life? What did he promise? What did he promise concerning your marriage? Concerning your children? Concerning your affair, your relationship? Concerning your business? He's saying, I am capable. If you don't fear, I will walk with you to the end. What secure difficulties does the word present to you? Or to the warm Jacob? Its pleasures? Its styles? Its habits? Its company? Its friendship? Its hatred? Its fierce opposition must all be regarded as a thing of the past. Because when you let the Lord hold you by your right hand, you will definitely make it to my sister, my brother. It doesn't matter. You look back. There's nothing you can say. There's something positive that I did. It doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is where you are going. Buana Sifiwe. Yes. Satan himself, with all the principalities and powers of hell, must be encountered and overcome. Remember, you have an enemy in this journey of faith. You have, a, and this enemy knows where you are going because he was there and he was chased. So he's working day in, down, day out to see that you don't reach to your destination. But if you allow the Lord to hold you by His right hand and not to fear the Lord will carry you through. In the book of Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians 6, 12. The Bible says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly Places. In this walk, you don't fight with a gun. In this walk, you don't fight. It's not a physical fight, but it's against the principalities. Where are they? In the heavenly places. They stand between you and your destiny in the heavenly places. But if you allow the Lord to hold you with his right hand, I tell you, it may take time. Patience is, is the fruit of the Spirit. It may take time, but finally you will be there because the one who promised, the one who did what? His promise is able to bring it to pass. Buana Sifiwe. And finally, number three is their success. Doesn't matter how small they are, the warm, they have their own successes. Weak as they are and weak as you are, my son, my brother, they all prevail at last. It doesn't matter how many were killed this morning and how many will be killed on your way coming from this place. But finally, I say finally, they'll come to their rest. It doesn't matter what you are going through. I want to encourage you this morning. You have prayed years go, years come. The Lord is saying, I'm still, I'm still at work because of you. Because I promise shall come to pass. They may take long, but finally they will make it. The warm Jacob may take long. My son, my brother, you may take long, but finally, 
what you purpose and what you've been waiting for, what you've been praying for, it shall come to pass because Jesus is at work for you and for me. As the children of Israel, notwithstanding all the obstructions of the Red Sea, of the wilderness, and the warlike inhabitants of Canaan, obtain at last the full possession of the promised land. You'll be telling people, you see this car? This was a very big wound, but today is not a wound. It is a scar because I overcame the wound. Like what remained, it is the scar. Jesus on the cross overcame because of you and me. What today you can see in his hands, it is only the scar. The wound is no longer there. Buana asifiwe. And so is for every believer crowned with victory at last. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, Verse 34 and 35. Daniel 2. Bible says, You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on, on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Verse 35. You watch. Verse 35. What? Yeah, right. You, you go and read it at home. I can't read where it is now. The light is too much. The hills and mountains are leveled through his tireless and steady fast actions. And then now, by a firm dependence on his promises, we may be enabled to cleanse our sins from all filthiness, both flesh. Thank you. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind then was found. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that was found, and the stone struck the image. And the stone that struck, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. What you are going through my sister, my brother, it will be crushed and nothing, nothing shall be found out of the mountains that are standing before you. As I conclude, let's read Matthew 21, verse 21. Matthew 21, verse 21. And so Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. It is not a hill. It is a and you know you cannot see the top of a mountain. When standing down, you cannot see the peak of the mountain. But the Lord is saying, just be to this mountain. No matter the size. You warm Jacob. You warm Jane. You warm Peter. It doesn't matter the height of the mountain. Just speak to it and it goes to the sea. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Two lessons we can learn. We can learn from this and then I'll be out of your way. The craziness of unbelief. The craziness of unbelief. We are apt to be discouraged by reason of our weakness. You see, you say, this is my weakness. And you possess it. It becomes part and parcel of you from today. Don't talk about your weakness. But what if we be as weak as a meanest worm? No one of us here is meek or mean or small like a worm. If God can deci decide... To work with a worm, what about you? Is God therefore weak? Is our God weak? No. Or unable to affect the image of his grace? No. He characterizes, he, characterizes, he characterizes us as a worm so that he can be the strong one. You can be a worm, he can be the strong one. On purpose, that when we, we, when, when we weak in ourselves, we may be strong in him. I'd expect him to perfect his strength in our weakness. Instead of being discouraged on account of our weakness, we should rather rejoice and glory in it. That my weakness, my, 
Paul said that he had a, a thorn in the flesh. And the Lord did not remove the thorn. What did they tell him? That my grace is sufficient. For you being a warm, just the way you are, the Lord will, will strengthen you for his own glory. Instead of being discouraged on account of our weakness, we should rather rejoice and glory in it, that the power of Christ may rest upon us. And as you are weak, his power cannot rest on you because you can do everything and anything for yourself. Therefore, when you are weak, his power can rest upon you and be glorified in us. We should not, like the unbelieving spies, contemplate the power of our enemies. And that is where we miss the mark phrase. We look at the mountain and say, me, before this mountain, I can't make it. In the book of Numbers, we see Numbers 14, verse number 3. People like me and you, how we magnify for us being warm. Numbers. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to remain in Egypt? Bring, give us verse number 9. Only do not rebel against the Lord. No fear the people of the land, for they are bread. They are what? They are bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. This is the children of Israel. No, the, the ten spies. When they went to spy the land, they came and said, before us, before our enemies, we, are like, we were like grasshoppers. Nobody told them. But they said before them, we were like grasshopper. What are you addressing yourself before that mountain? What are you addressing yourself? That with this marriage work? Yes, it, you are not in state of marriage. How can it work? Will I get married? Yes. It is God who said it's not good for a man to live alone. Why are you doubting? The Lord is saying he's going to walk with you. The second one is the need of constant action. The need of constant action. Our weakness is no excuse for inactivity. Or does, no, or does God's promise aid replace the necessity of our own actions? No. On the contrary, it is that that very promise that encourages our action. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That encouragement and that promise it gives us, it encourages us to take our actions. In Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved. Does it say my enemies? He said, my beloved. As you have always obeyed, not disobeyed. Have always obeyed. Not as in my presence. This was Paul. In my presence only. But now. How much, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. You work out your own, not our salvation, it is personal. We normally say Jesus is my personal savior. Work out your own salvation when it is during the day or at night. Let me tell you, friends, you are who you are under the blanket. That is your character. Who you are under the blanket. When nobody can see you, that is who you are. The mountains must be threshed by our arm. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent must take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve. Matthew eleven twelve, 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until when? Now. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. For you to thresh the mountain, you are required. The Lord cannot thresh it without your, 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 your arm. The Lord cannot thresh it without you telling me, yes, we can do it with you. When I saw Sifiwe. We must run our race and fight our fight and endure unto, endure unto the end. For it is to him only that overcometh that the crown of glory will be given. 
not to those who left it along the way, not to those who backslided, but those who are going to overcome to the end shall receive the crown of glory. Buana sifiwe. Allow me to say this because my time is over. Give God praise for what he's doing or he has done. Remember, it is not you who destroyed the mountain, but God through you. Therefore, don't take glory. God gave you the power. Allow God to use you to destroy the mountain. Then rejoice in him for doing it. What is the insurance of, this, of the success of the worm? Who could insure it but the almighty God? Jesus Christ, Jehovah, the most high God, and worms Jacob, king's man, redeemer. If the Lord could fight for Jacob, the same God is our God this morning. Buana yesu asifiwe. Allow the Lord to use you to cry, to thresh the mountain. Think of a ball. Think, for, think of Serena Williams. Serena, Serena Williams, she, she, she plays the tennis. Sindio, the tennis. The ball in Serena Williams' hand is the same ball that you have in your hand this morning. But the difference is, it is in whose hands? It is the hands of who? Serena Williams. That alone gives that ball value. And that alone gives this ball victory. When I saw Sifiwe. Think of Tiger Wood, the golf player. That ball in the hand of Tiger Wood is the same ball that is in the supermarket. What makes the difference the ball, in whose hands the ball is? And the Lord is asking this morning, this afternoon, in whose hands are you? For you to overcome, you must be in my hands. Just the same with that ball in the hand of, the, of Serena Williams and Tiger Wood. If you're in the hands of the Lord, believe you, my sister, my brother, you will make it. But you know, outside in the supermarket, you cannot thresh the mountains. And you are here this morning or this afternoon. You are not born again. The first step for the Lord to walk with you and to hold your hand is for you to receive him as your personal savior. Are you here? You're not born again. You've been fighting alone, threshing the mountains alone. No, you're just about to give up. The Lord is saying, let me guide you. Let me hold you by your right hand. Let me be your companion and you're going to make it. You are here. You're not born again. It is not embarrassing to get born again. We won't close our eyes because we got born again. And today, we are born again. It doesn't matter what you have done, the success you have, the achievements you have. All those will come scrambling down because they have no foundation. The only foundation, it is the rock. The chief cornerstone, the rock that was rejected by the builders. And he's saying this morning, I desire, I just desire to walk with you. I just desire to hold your hand. I just desire to be your master. Come as a sinner. You live as a saint. He's saying, I love you. There's nothing else he could have done. But from dying on the cross for you, he paid your debt. He became a sinner. You became a saint. He became a curse. You became a blessing. This morning he's saying, make up your mind. Make up your mind. So that I can declare these words to you. Fear not, O oh, Jacob, because I and you, we can thresh this mountain. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. What a Father you are. What a Savior you are. What a comforter you are. What a healer you are. What a provider you are. All these things, Jehovah Father, they are in you for us. Jehovah Father, we can only receive them, Jehovah God, because of the merit of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We are saying this afternoon, the life has become too hard for us, and we are bringing it to you, because you are saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. We thank you for the assurance, and we bless you, because you know we are going places. You and us, your Father, we cannot be defeated, and you are going places. 
We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.